All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to the a the AMF series episode number nine, I believe. I forget. I think Andrew. so. Okay, awesome, man. Yep. All right, so Andrew, what are we talking about today? Okay, so uh, today is all about uh, leadership. Uh, you know, both the mindset, the behaviors, pretty much everything that goes into leadership, and how that leads to having a brand, which leads to creating trust amongst your audience and having folks that really want to hear what you have to say and really trust the things that you say and follow your recommendations and all that kind of fun stuff. So, you know, one of the things we've talked about this a little bit in the past, but one of the things we talk about with attraction marketing is it is a leadership skill set. And so, you know, this is very much a skill and it's something you want to cultivate. And yeah, so we're going to dig in. And it's funny, I sent Fernie my notes uh, beforehand. And uh, the f the first line I have, he's like, I don't know that one. What is that? So I'm I'm going to explain. So for you, check this out. Right. Uh, and maybe the audience are gonna are gonna hear this one for the first time. Hopefully, I don't mess it up. Now, Zig Ziglar, as some of you know, uh, was one of the great motivational speakers. I think he was really big back in like the '60s, '70s. You know, like he was a very much a predecessor to Tony Robbins. You know, and, and a lot of the guys that came along later, '80s, '90s. And so, just really like a legend in the field. I know that. Um, uh, Seth Godin was a huge, uh, Zig Ziglar was a huge influence uh, on Seth Godin and, and really impacted a lot of lives. He's kind of old school. You know, a lot of people don't know the Zig Ziglar stuff these days, kind of like Jim Rohn, you know, another um, one of those guys, same kind of era. So uh, one of um, <clears throat> one of Zig's teachings was have do be versus be do have. And the idea is, uh, I don't know if we kind of default to this form of thinking but a lot of people think like, oh, well, if I just like have the stuff, right? Like if you if you have the Ferrari and you have the mansion and you have the whatever, the, you know, the hot arm candy, whether it's, you know, your wife or your husband, whatever, you know, you've, you've got the <laughs> spouse, you know, if you have all these things, then you can do X, Y and Z, right? Then you can travel around and speak on stage and, you know, and then you'll you'll then be the leader. Right. At that point, like, oh, well, obviously I'll be the leader if I have all the stuff. And if if I have the stuff that I can do the things. Right. Mm -hmm. But you really want to flip that equation on its head and you want to be the leader. Step one. Do the things. Step two, so that you can then have all the stuff. Right. Have all the goodies, you know, have the carrot that we're all chasing. So that's kind of the idea. But anyway, I just kind of want to, to lead with that. And, uh, and and, you know, Fernie has talked extensively about how there are a lot of behaviors, you know, key emphasis here on behaviors around leadership, the kind of things that leaders do, the kind of investments they make in themselves and their education and their businesses, et cetera. So Fernie, let's talk about that. Let's talk about, because um, there are some tactical elements that hopefully we'll get to today around leadership. A lot of that has to do with creating content, you know, that, that nurtures your audience, that educate your audience, that sellicates your audience, that pre-qualifies your audience. You know, those are some of the more tactical things. But before we get there, there's just kind of like that, not just mindset, right? It's not just a, you don't just think your way there. There are things that you do, there are behaviors you follow mm -hmm. as a leader. So let's start there. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. So now I understand what you're, what you're getting at. And um, well, here's, here's the, this is my take on it based on my years of not only doing and, and being and having, uh, but, but also just uh, some research and, and mentors that I had that approached this from a scientific standpoint, what actually does change behaviors, uh, what actually leads you closer to having uh, uh, what you want. And for me, you know, you know, the, the bottom line is most personal development has it wrong. They, they teach you that you have to believe first, that you have to believe in yourself, that you have to believe you can have something before you can have it. And, and that's only partially correct. What they're missing most of the time and the reason working on my mindset doesn't work for most people is because you, I mean, one, first of all, mindset is so vague. It, it means something to different people. Mindset can mean motivation to one. Mindset can be think more positive. M mindset can be, it, it can mean all types of things. So at that point, you're starting with something vague. So how can you possibly work on it and fix it if it's all like really vague? 
Um, if I ask people to define what mindset is, they'll come, uh, 10 people will come up with 10 different definitions. And so, you know, you know, often, you know, for me, you can say mindset is motivation, uh, or, you know, it's synonymous with motivation. So, so if it's that, let's start with that premise, but here's the thing you can't, you can't work on your mindset. Like you can't change yourself from within so that you can be externally the person uh, that, that you, that is going to hit the goals or achieve the goals or make the money that you want. You know, the action has to come first. So, you know, you, your behaviors have to match what the person you, you strive to be. So if your behaviors match, that's what actually begins to program you from within that starts changing your mindset or your belief or your motivation. So you just, you have to get started. You have to do the work. You change your mindset from the outside in, not from the inside out. And that's what you're taught a lot of the times that you have to work on the inside so that you can have what you want on the outside. And that's just, it's plain bull. You, you, the only way to reprogram yourself is to start behaving differently. And it's going to seem awkward. The environment around you is going to resist it. The people, even the conditions, even, even, um, you know, your, where you work, all that is, is going to be counter counterproductive to what you're trying to achieve. So, but you have to do the behaviors anyway. And the more you do the, now what, what, what doing does is it starts producing results. It builds knowledge. So it builds uh, results and knowledge. So the result doesn't have to be, I made a million dollars or I made a dollar. Uh, the result could be, I learned something. There is, and, and learning something is a result. Getting data and information is a result. Seeing what works and doesn't work is a result. And the more you do it, the more you, you start growing and you start becoming. The re when the results start happening, that's what leads to knowledge. That's what leads to confidence. And that amplifies your motivation. So it's okay if in the beginning your motivation is a little low. Hey, you're starting something new. That's normal. But you have to have a, you know, if you want to motivate yourself with anything, just have a clear idea of what you're trying to achieve. What is that? Well, like what what I want, what do I want to achieve at the end of this month? Or what do I where do I want to be? A year from now and maybe you can start there as like you're you have a vision for where you're headed and and what you're gonna what you're gonna hit but then you're not gonna achieve that vision unless you start doing and the more you do the more your behaviors start matching that of a leader and the more your behaviors lead to you getting knowledge the more your behaviors lead to you uh getting, building your confidence and then again the more you do and so, so that's the, for me, it's about the action. You always change from the outside in. Sometimes even some of the person development gurus, big time gurus, like if I said their names, you would know who they are. Um, and, you know, they preach, you got to change your belief from the inside, but then what they're actually having people do, the exercises they're having them do uh, are actually actions. They're having, they're, they're doing exercises. They're writing things down. They're writing down their vision. They're writing down their goals. Those are actions because those are actions that successful people do. Successful people do write down their goals. Successful people do have a vision for where they want to want to go. Writing it down are actions that leaders do. So the action always, always begins. So even though they're saying, oh, we're doing this to change yourself from within. Well, no, you're changing from without. You're doing those things that that successful people do. Um, so that's the the first thing. It, it's just for so for me, for for me, I'm more like I was joking with Andrew. I'm more of a uh, of a of a do be have guy. If you do, you will be, and if you be, you will have. And and then it's it's cyclical. You know, it's not like one, one two, three, and we're done. It's like the more you do, the more you will have, and the more you'll be. And the have is really your is not just having wealth or money, it's knowledge, it's information, it's experience that builds confidence. And, and so, so, you know, when you do, you will be, and you will have. So 
if you do, you'll gain knowledge and be more confident and, and you'll have the result uh, from that. And so, you know, so at this point, it's like just a semantics conversation. I don't really care what comes after do, whether it's be or have uh, for different people, it'll, it'll, you know, be different. It's fine to be do, you know, do have be or do be have like at that, that, the last two don't matter to me. Uh, it's the first one you got to do, you got to take actions and you got to behave like a leader and you got to be, you got to, in the beginning, you have to do it consciously because your environment, everything you've created in your life up until that point, if you have not behaved in that way is going to try to sabotage it. It's going to try to like, it's going to create resistance, your family, your friends, your environment work, because all of that is what you're trying to change. So if you're trying to change your life, then you can't count on your life to be conducive for where you want to go. You're going to have to, you know, fundamentally be, uh, you'd be operating in a different way that is different from, from all the external factors. And what will happen is as you start doing, as you start growing, as you start getting knowledge, those things will eventually change. New people will appear in your life. Some people will fade. Some people will upgrade themselves because they're inspired by you. Some people will, will exit. Um, you know, your environment, how, you know, how you design your environment. I didn't always have this awesome studio. You know, I didn't always have this nice camera. It's like, it, you know, if you've seen some of my old videos, it's progressed. And, and it was definitely better than the, the environment I was in in the beginning. I was in a small, tiny, crowded bedroom. I had a bunch of clutter behind me. And, and that's how, where I operated. I used to record videos uh, literally in my bedroom uh, in front of a white wall because that was like the nicest place in my house at the time. And so so the house was not conducive for me to, you know, be the person I wanted to be. But I did the behavior anyway. Uh, you know, no one saw what was behind the camera. So I did it anyway, even though it felt a little awkward or weird because I didn't feel, you know, I didn't feel successful, but I did the behavior anyway. So and I and I did the work anyway. So so that's my my take on on that whole, you know, be do have bullshit. I don't know. Like uh, for me, it's just do the do do it. Uh, and the other two things will happen. <laughs> yeah, well, that's really what I wanted to capture is not to get too hung up on the, the structure of it. But, yeah, the idea is just, you know, the, the doing is obviously uh, very important. It is the, the behaviors here, the leadership behaviors that we want to be cultivating and doing. And, uh, you know, as an extension, you know, that's kind of the the abstract side of it. You know, if you will, that's sort of the philosophical side. But then when we get into more of the tactical side of it, it's more and, and you know, Ferdy, forgive me if this this is one. Um, but J. Abraham talks a lot about the strategy of preeminence. And that's one of the kind of foundational you know, aspects of how he does business. And so that's kind of where I wanted to, you know, to take things, to, to bring things to the realm of, uh, you know, when we are doing uh, and we are building our brand, building our business, you know, the two are very, you know, tightly correlated. Uh, but, but that's kind of the, the philosophy that guides uh, that process. Um, mm -hmm. Randy, so it's really it. let's, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, I don't understand the question. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I, ribbon, man, come on, you just get so uh, so preeminent. So we want to really what we want to talk about is to to kind of tie in you know these behaviors with a lot of things that we've talked about in the past, which is you know we want to take you know it's kind of like from target market to now this is serving people in action. So when we're uh, when, you know when we are creating content and we're doing things that are branding ourselves uh, online. You know, we want to approach that from a preeminent perspective. All right, define preeminence. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, pretend yeah. I'm stupid. Okay. And let's start there. All right. So, uh, and I'm getting a little bit echo. So hopefully, that's not. Uh, uh, I'm good. I'm good on my okay. end. All right. So, uh, really, essentially, what we're talking about is putting the needs of your audience before your own needs. So we've we've talked about that a lot, right? Yeah. Uh, context using, you know, different terms. But what I want to capture here today, you know, when we're talking about branding and we're talking about leadership, you know, that's how we want to behave when we're creating content. And I do want to talk about if we have time, hopefully some content creation tips because we've kind of 
brushed up against the idea of, hey, well, I mean, what you're going to be doing when you are, you know, doing attraction marketing, a lot of the stuff we've talked about so far in the series, you're going to be creating content for your audience. Uh, but before we get there, uh, we need to talk about, you know, putting their needs first, uh, putting, uh, um, uh, you know, the content creation is just totally based around serving them, uh, elevating them. And that is essentially the behavior that we want to capture. So anyway, in terms of uh, in terms of the series, I just wanted to to get a soundbite essentially from Fernie, you know, talking about that in the context of uh, branding uh, and content creation, because those two things, again, are very, very tightly intertwined when we're when we're you know really talking about because, I mean, your business as an attraction marketer, the, the only thing people are really experiencing of you online is is the content of yours that that they're consuming. And so that's the experience. So, uh, Fernie, we could actually maybe even start with, you know, one of the definitions you've given of a brand is the size of your network multiplied by the trust you have with that network. And so what's really crucial about, you know, these behaviors we're describing and the preeminence we're describing. So essentially just putting your audience, ab ab you know, above you, that creates that trust that amplifies uh, your branding process. So, yeah. So. That's what I want. I just want to get a soundbite from you talking about, you know, that before we kind of dive in really tactically to some content creation ideas. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, going off of what I just talked about with, um, you know, the behaviors, uh, you know, one of the reasons old school network marketing is, is so counterintuitive uh, or not counterintuitive, counterproductive, you know, you're trying, you're, 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 putting out behaviors that are inauthentic, even deceptive and sleazy. And, and so you're going to resist it because you are automatically, that's not a person you want to be. So you're going to resist doing it. And so, you know, when, uh, I'm not sure how to, how to put this, but if you, if you want to, you know, be successful in network marketing and, and get traction from the get-go. You want to have, you want to exhibit behaviors that reflect who you want to be. So the, the problem with old school network marketing is that it causes you to be somebody that you don't want to be. And, and, and so you have to be really conscious and really aware uh, uh, that, and, and resist every, every fiber of your being. Cause you got to, you're, you're trying to force yourself to do something that you don't really want to do. And, and so, and that's the problem. And that's what, what is kind of transferred to the prospect and you're, you're, you're conveying to the, pro it's a, it's a strategy that, that, that it's really hard for, for you to focus on the needs of your prospect because it's so inauthentic. But if you're operating with a, from a, from a, a, a strategy where, you're focused on the needs of the prospect. You're you're there to help somebody. That's a very natural thing for us to want to do. So there's less resistance to that. And really, what's the difference between a leader at your level and a leader at a higher level if they've operated authentically? Is they just help more people than, than you. So what you're striving to do is put yourself in a position where you're deploying strategies that, by their nature, force you to think about what's in it for the prospect, not what's in it for yourself. When you deploy old school strategies, you tend to focus on what's in it for you. And that's actually how it's presented. Uh, you, you're given a strategy that's like, make a list of your hundred friends and family. And like, why, why do I need to do that? Is that like, cause that's how you build your business. Okay, I'm gonna do that to build my business. Well, what about your friends and family? Like where is them in the picture in terms of their needs? Notice how you're, you're taught things, but you know, even though a lot of tap runners, excuse me, will, will, you know, talk a good game about authenticity and service and all that crap, the way that what they're teaching is actually stuff that by just the tactic itself is inauthentic. The tactic itself causes you to go to, to think about yourself. So with attraction marketing, you know, we start all our training with talk, we're talking mainly about your prospects mainly about who you want to attract. And, and, you know, it's very hard that the tactic itself, you know, is actually by its nature focused on looking at your prospect, on what they care about and who you, who do you want to attract? 
what group of people do you want to attract? Like, this is the thinking we have you do. And that orients you from a place of service that puts you there. And so therefore, the person you're being when you're deploying attraction marketing strategies is somebody that wants to help. And the more people you help, the bigger leader you become and the more successful you become. That's what makes attraction marketing work is like the strategy, the the step-by-step blueprint is in and of itself focused on the prospect as opposed to old school strategies that that tend to focus on yourself. And if you you can you can use this old school strategy, you can you can you can I can frame an old school strategy in a way that's more authentic and puts the puts the focus on the prospect. Um, but it's actually really hard. I'll give you an example. Uh, if I was doing the list of 100 with with my downline, which I wouldn't, but if I was doing the list of 100 and I had to make that as authentic and genuine as possible, and let's say I'm let's say uh, my company, uh, you know, sells a, a let's say it's a gut health product. Uh, or it's some sort of probiotic, prebiotic, that type of thing. <clears throat> then I would go, you know, if I was sitting down with my my new recruit, I'd be like, so who do you know that who do you know that hasn't, you know, that has expressed interest in in their gut health or improving their health through through consuming probiotics? Who do you know? All right, write them down because those are people that are already interested in that stuff. So let's let's they're probably very knowledgeable. They probably like this. Um, and it'll probably, you know, it'll probably enhance what they're already doing. Who do you know that maybe is uh, suffering from maybe skin issues or rashes or eczema or psoriasis, you know, something like that? It's like, oh, well, you know, the, I know my, my grandma deals with that. My, you know, my, my friend, she, she has psoriasis. She deals with a lot of that. I was like, okay, well, that, those are people we can help. So write, write, write them down because these are people we can reach out to because, you know, they have a, a potential issue. Who do you know has a lot of joint pain and like, you know, probably from inflammation, but, you know, just has a, they're getting older and just, you know, their joints are just not where, where, it, where they are, where they used to be. Um, and they've expressed to you that they, they're, where they're just basically complaining about that. Uh, and then they go, oh, well, my uncle, you know, blah, blah, blah. My, my dad is like, okay, let, let's write them down. So now we have a list of people that we can help. Let's go from there. So that's how I would do the the whole list of friends and family if I really wanted to force it to be something that's authentic and focused on the prospect and helping people. But ultimately, it's still weird because the whole like act of reaching out to somebody, try to that where your intention is like, okay, it's your your mind is going to go back to I hope they buy, I hope they buy from me, and 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 so as you're approaching them, you're I hope they say yes. So your mind will sabotage you because. Ultimately, you know, this stuff going through your mind. So, so that's like, so that's what makes old school strategies difficult to do authentically. You can do it if you are, you know, strong of mind, but I'd rather just do a strategy that in and of itself by its nature is more authentic. Awesome. So next I want to move into, um, and you know, we've told, by the way, guys, if you got value from that, if, if that made sense to you, drop a number two, I just want to you know you guys are looped in, tuned in. <laughs> Perfect. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I know I want to get a little bit tactical. And, you know, you might want to do this by way of we've talked a little bit about your Better Networker story in the past and how you used to show up and deliver really useful information there. Uh, but I, I'd like to share at least, a, a you know, a tactical tip or two around um, you know, how can someone go online and mine the problems of their audience and then create content around it? Like, what can they do for inspiration to see, like, hey, what are my people struggling with to help inform them to essentially give them, you know, what I would describe as a fairly endless supply of content topics to then serve people, you know, using? Yeah, okay. So, there, so how to go about figuring out what are the primary problems and challenges of your target market. So, so we've talked about target market and defining who it is you want to, you want to attract to you. And I kind of gave you a little bit of a clue right now where I was talking about who suffers from this. So who's complained about having this problem. It's like, that is an exercise for kind of like, you know, finding and reaching your target market. So once you've done that, the, the who part, then it's like, where are they? And so where are they can be in a number of places. 
one, obviously there's people in your sphere of influence that, you know, where you're like, this can really help this person. I want, you know, so you can start there. Um, but then, you know, pretty soon you're going to run out of those people. And so, uh, you know, you can go on, you know, instead of maybe approaching them one-on-one, -on -one, there's a strategy where you can just do some curiosity posting on your personal profile to kind of cause pe the people that are in your target market to come out, come out of the woodwork. So like if you have a, a thousand friends on, on Facebook, but maybe only a subset of them would be interested, well, put out a message that is just really honed in on addressing the problems and needs of those subset of people so that they themselves can raise their hand and go, Hey, I'd like to learn more. This is interesting. Oh, I deal with this all the time. You know, I, you know, I, I, tell me what you're doing. So you can create a post that'll cause people to raise their hand and reach out to you by just what you say. And your messaging really, your, what you say really has to be about the problems of your target market. Next is you can, you know, you know, so and, and when you do that, when you come out, get them to come out of the woodwork, so to speak, you interview them, ask them questions. Like, don't even have your product in mind about like trying to sell them, like just interview them, connect. And so when you have people that reach out that already are connected with you in your target market and like, don't just jump the gun and get to your product, spend some time to actually understand their situation. What are their problems? What, what is this causing for you? Um, what is it like? Like, what is this keeping you from doing? When you ask them those questions, two things happen. One, you're getting intel for what you need to talk about next. And you get intel for all types of different topics you can cover. And the next thing is they feel understood. And you're, act, you're more likely to get them as a customer or enroll them because they feel understood. And so it's, it's, it, if by you focusing on their needs, they feel so understood that they view you as an authority. You know, we don't tend like, you know, when someone complains about their problems, they're just complaining and venting. But when you ask them questions that are that where the question seems like you already kind of know a little bit about the subject, uh, where you go, well, they'll tell me, you start off with just tell me about what your biggest challenge is. What are some of your struggles? OK, uh, you know, so do you you know, so this is what I'm what I'm understanding um, do you also deal with this or do you also deal with that? Is this also an issue? It's like, and if they go, yeah, like, yeah. And they go off and, and rant about like the thing that you said, is this also a problem? Is this also, all of a sudden they're like, this guy understands me. He's like asking me questions about things that I, I haven't shared with him about, but, and so how you ask a question positions you as an authority and then it's natural for them to go, well, what do you recommend? Like you, you seem to know something about this. So again, the interview process is important. Now, beyond just those one-on-ones, the one-on-ones is by far going to be the most, the best way for you to gather intelligence and learn about your target market and become a better attraction marketer, period. End of story. One-on-one -on -one conversations are always way better. But you can also go and find groups on social media and that are are kind of built around dealing or helping people with certain problems in your target market. And you can read the posts when people talk about a particular problem or issue or something they're confused about, like read them, make a note, ask questions. Like I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious here, like ask a question in the group. Like what are some of the, you know, I'd say on a, on a scale one to 10 or not, not a scale one to 10, but uh, I, you know, you can list out the problems and go, uh, out of the, all these problems, which one is your is the biggest challenge? Or what are what do you guys primarily struggle with in here? Uh, I'm just curious. Um, you can there's all types of strategies for doing that, but you can find a community of people that are already kind of dealing with or or in the target market you're in, and read the post, look at the questions they're asking, engage with those people, ask them questions in their post. You do a post that asks questions, and all of a sudden you get in, you, you get Intel. And so to start with, that's where I would, that's how I would do. But ultimately having it lead to one-on-one -on -one conversations, you know, that sounds like not very leveraged for any, uh, I think you were the like, you know, passive attraction marketing guy. I was like, yeah, you, you'll get there. 
if you understand your target market better, better than even they understand themselves. I can't tell you how many times somebody I've spoken to who saw one of our ads or read one of our blog posts or saw one of our Facebook lives where when I finally get to talk to them uh, or a leader, I get to talk to the leader. It, it's like, Vernie, I felt like you were, you were describing my life or I felt like you were talking to me. Like your videos felt like it, you were talking to me. And the, the reason, and I know it did, I know it felt that way to them. I already know it because I've done so much work to understand who I can serve and what their problems and how I can help them with their problem. Yeah, great example of that. Uh, we actually just had a service provider reach out to you, Fernie. And uh, what was so great about the process they used was uh, uh, they, they just really articulated the struggles you know, some struggles we were having within the business so well that it was like, okay, it's it's almost obvious that they know how to solve those problems because they understand them so well. It just, it's just mm -hmm. something you just naturally make that connection. And you're like, wow, like this is the guy, <laughs> like clearly. This yeah. Is the guy. Yeah. That like uh, 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 the consultative approach, people always talk about the consultative selling. What, what does that look like? Well, when you, when you ask the questions and, and like interview them, like I talked about, the way you would transition to like making them an offer is the offer is presented. What you're going to sell them uh, is presented like a plan. Got it. Okay. So, you know, I, I think I got, I think I can help you. Would you be open to, would you be open to learning more about, uh, you know, how, we, how I can do that? And they're like, yeah. Or would you be open to hearing more? Yeah. Okay. However you want to phrase it. But ultimately like, here's what I, you know, based on what you shared with me, here's what I think, uh, I think, I think, uh, would, would help you. And, and then you just write out the plan. What's the plan? Here's what I recommend. First of all, stop eating this, this, and this, uh, that's just totally, no matter what you take, no matter what you do, that's going to totally sabotage, uh, whatever you're trying to do. Uh, number two, uh, these are some things you, you probably should eat more of. This will really help. And, and so here, here's, here's a list of a few things. Number three, you need to add this supplement or this vitamin or this thing to, to your regimen. I highly recommend it. I take it personally and it'll, it, what it'll do is it, it'll just amplify the results from doing these other things I recommended. Uh, and number four, it's like, so you're kind of just, you're forming the plan for them. Who, who forms plans? People that know their stuff. So if your offer is presented like, like basically almost like a recipe or a plan or a strategy for them, then that's what leaders, that's what people with authority, that's what people with knowledge do. Um, that's what a doctor does. They give you a list of prescriptions. Okay. So, okay. So after they hear your symptoms, they go, okay, you need to, so I'm going to write you a prescription for this because this is going to help you with this. I'm going to write a prescription for this because this is going to help you with this. And like, so if you talk to your prospects in that way, even how you pitch them, doesn't feel like a pitch. It feels like, okay, this guy, this guy has a plan for me. Uh, and no one else is giving me a plan. So might as well go with this guy. So you see how that works? Really simple. Guys, if this is making sense to you, drop me a number four. I just want to know you're tuned in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. And actually, that's a great segue. So next time we're going to dive a little bit uh, deeper into that, um, that kind of expert enrollment framework that Fernie was kind of outlining. And we're going to talk a bit more about the consultative approach. And we're going to talk about sort of technically and tactically what a minimum viable enrollment system looks like. Because there's some tools you can use to give yourself some more leverage. Um, and you can do that pretty quickly, simply without, you know, too much technical complication. Um, if, if that sort of thing, you know, doesn't come naturally to you. So that's where we're going to dig in uh, next time. But Fernie, any, uh, any final words for today before we sign off? Guys, if you guys are serious about wanting to incorporate attraction marketing, not like the what people out there are calling attraction marketing, but we've been doing this for well over 15 years where we're the first in the space to introduce these ideas, these concepts, both from a one-on-one -on -one standpoint, a social media standpoint, and uh, you know, ultimately build towards automation. If you want to be able to incorporate this in your business and just you know, 10x or the, any the results you can possibly get from any old school strategy, then type in in the chat, I'm ready. And when, somebody on our team will reach out and they'll have, they're just going to consult with you. They actually have nothing to sell you. 
They actually want to see how we can support you and help you what resources are already for free available in the group that can help you or if one of our programs might be a fit. And then they actually will give you information as to how you can learn more about that. Um, so just type in I'm ready and you can learn more. And one of our attraction marketing specialists uh, will reach out and just to have a sh quick, short conversation uh, to see what next steps might look like for you. So that's it, guys. <laughs> yep. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, like I said, we'll be back next week. We're going to dive a bit more into creating your sort of consultative enrollment funnel and kind of technically how that looks and, you know, dig a little bit deeper into the framework of that conversation. Uh, we'll be back same time, same place next week. And in the meantime, have a great weekend. All right. Take care, guys.